Okay. All right. Welcome to Mindset Class. Ella, it's nice and dark where you are. Um, <laughs> so it is, what is it? It's Wednesday here. It's Tuesday afternoon slash evening for some of you. Um, either way, a very warm welcome no matter where you are in the world. And I very much appreciate you being here. So this is recorded. You will get a replay. It is available to the public. So obviously, if you want to be in the hot seat today, just know that, that that's going to happen. Although I think all of you have been here before, so you know that. So please land in this space. Shut down Facebook, put the phone away and get really, really present to what's happening here. Because even if you're not going to put your hand up for hot seat today, there are messages here for you, I promise. In fact, all of you have been here before. Would you agree that even when you weren't in the hot seat, you, you saw yourself in whoever was? Maria, that was you last month. And uh, lots and lots of people gave feedback about how there was a synchronous moment for them as well. So, so this is about you, even if you feel like it's not about you today. Now, I want you to have a think about someone in your life that you love, but that you absolutely get so frustrated in trying to communicate with. And it's like every time you try to speak to this person, it's like you're speaking German and they're speaking Chinese. <laughs> and you love them and you want the best for them, but it's really, really frustrating and you, you often clash, right? It's really hard to get through and communicate your message and get them to understand where you're coming from. The reason that is, is because people can only ever meet you as deeply as they've met themselves. But the same goes for you when you're trying to connect with others. And in this context, we're looking at in your business today. You can only meet your future clients as deeply as you've met yourself. Welcome, welcome, Helen. <clears throat> Which means that right now, there are some future clients waiting for you to get ready, to be ready. And the purpose of working on your mindset is to continue to expand your awareness and continue to meet yourself deeply so that you move up a concentric sphere. So now you have another layer, another level of person to be able to serve. Because we are humans and we are animals, that we are never going to escape that, every single one of us wants to run away from challenge. It feels uncomfortable. I don't like the pain. I don't like what I'm seeing about myself. But it's actually in those challenges that you find your greatest opportunity for growth. So part of what we do here in Business Builder, in one-on-ones, is not just strategy. It's also really important to work on your mindset. And in fact, 80% of my one-on-one -on -one clients for the month of May had their record-breaking month. And I truly believe that that is partly because of the mindset component that we do. And we sprinkle it in in every Business Builder session. Before we even go out there and connect with the world, you've got to connect with yourself because remember... You can only meet people, your future audience, as deeply as you've met yourself. And we turn up to go and connect with people and we're in tick box mode instead of coming to our heart first. So today we're going to go for 55 minutes and this is an opportunity for you to put your hand up if you want to be in the hot seat. Um, and for the rest of you, please listen in to what people are saying that they want to work on because you get to choose who's in the hot seat today. And um, <clears throat> it's not a popularity competition. So don't worry if you don't get picked. It's just based on the topic that the individual wants to work on. So can you put your Zoom hand up? Aralea is straight into it. <laughs> you know how we roll, Aralea. <laughs> um, can you put your Zoom hand up? Or if you don't know how to put your Zoom hand up, just pop your hand up. 
if you are wanting to put to <laughs> great Ella um, if you want to be in the hot seat and by the way if you've been in the hot seat before don't don't think that you can't put your hand up this is your space as much as anyone else okay no worries Helen you've got to leave in about half an hour got it okay RLA you had your hand up first so in 60 seconds what is it that you would like to work on today my love Well, it's still like I already overcome quite some in the business builder sessions, but it's still on a deeper level. It's believing in what I have to offer to people and get into action. That was like lo less than 20 seconds now. <laughs> Hey, that was amazing. Somebody would think you've been in business builder practicing your communication. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, perfect. That was beautifully succinct and very, very clear. Thank you. Ella, is it third time lucky today? Let's have a crack. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But we'll mine, see. I'll just turn up my brightness because it's pretty dark here. Um, okay. <laughs> I wrote a note for mine. So it's similar to Aralea in the sense that I'm not taking the action that I want to be taking. Um, mm -hmm. I keep finding that I'm prioritizing other things and I'm either setting the bar too high for myself in terms of what to do every day, or mm -hmm. I need to cut out other things in my life and prioritize the business. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. And just focusing on sustainable growth while I'm working a nine to five. Perfect. Thank you. Aralea, can you just pop your, or I can pop your Zoom hand down now that you've done that. Whoops. Um, <clears throat> does anybody else want to be in the hot seat today or at least apply for the hot seat? Or is it just Aralea and Ella? No? Okay, perfect. Well, that's going to make the choice really easy. <laughs> and there are some similarities, but there's also some differences. So just to recap, um, Aralea's is about wanting to work on actually believing what it is that she has to offer and then getting into action. And Ella's is that she feels that she's not taking the action. She's finding that she's prioritising lots of other things and it's either that she's setting the bar too high in terms of what she has to do every day or she wants to get clear, is it that, or is it that she needs to cut out other things to prioritise her business? So um, Helen has chosen Ella. Can everybody take a minute, take a second, and just pop in the chat um, either RLA's name or Ella, depending on who you want to be in the hot seat. And just remembering, of course, it's not popularity. It's just about, okay, I think we've got, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ella, finally, third time's a charm. <laughs> All right, brilliant. Um, Aralea, thank you so much for popping your hand up again. <laughs> and uh, maybe next month, right? But I think you'll get a lot out of today because there are some similarities here. So um, thank you so much, ladies, for putting your hand up. And Aralea, you choose you. Okay. Here we go. Now, I would encourage you as well, as always, while we're doing the work with Ella, answer these questions for yourself. Maybe have a pen and paper as insights come up for you to jot down a couple of keywords, but also stay present because maybe it's the next thing that's about to be spoken about that's actually going to be the insight for you as well. Okay, Ella, so what is... What is the trait or action or inaction about yourself that you're most disliking right now? Probably the inaction, like because I've I put it in my calendar to do my hops and mm. then I have an outcome for what I want to achieve for each hop. And sometimes yep. I'll go up to the hop, but I won't achieve that outcome for X amount of comments or x amount of connections in a hop session <coughs> pardon me so is that actually the thing that you're so is it the inaction inside of the hour of power or is it the not doing the hour of power oh it's a bit of both because i think i'm um kind of like that diagram that you draw where it goes up and down is 
my action in the business on a weekly basis. Like I'll set up to do a certain amount of time every day and then Mm -hmm. I'll something will happen like I'll get home from work and be like oh well I really need to get to the gym today so I'll Mm -hmm. go to the gym and then by the time I get home I'm like oh well I need to get my eight to nine hours of sleep so I should go to sleep now (laughs) eight to nine hours of sleep (laughs) who the heck's getting eight to nine hours of sleep (laughs) oh Manuela I'm like okay wow (laughs) Okay, it's not just you, Ella. <laughs> yeah, cool. That's good to know. <laughs> All right, we we make a joke, but um, it, it is important to get good sleep because otherwise, you're no good in your business when you turn up anyway. That you're like a robot, right? Yeah. So I make a joke, but you get the sleep that you need to get. Um, but what is the thing that you are most disliking about yourself right now? <clears throat> maybe it's just that on some level I just think I can't do it and so that thought is causing me not to show up in the way that I want to show up okay how do you wish you were showing up um I wish that I was (laughs) I wish that I was motivated I was like yes let's do this and um getting up earlier in the mornings and having all of my business activities done before I get to work so I don't have to do it in the afternoons when I get home and I'm tired. Um, And, yeah, I just wish that I completed all of my outcome goals consistently. So So I'm seeing some kind of sustainable habit building while I'm still working okay so that's better that's a lot clearer and can we all relate that we have an expectation of what our calendar is supposed to look like what we're supposed to do when we're supposed to do it and then we become robotic ticking a box and then beat ourselves up for the things that we apparently didn't do yeah so There's a couple of things to break down there, Ella. First of all, what would be the draw? So you've said that if we drill in, it's like, oh, well, I wish things were, I wish I was showing up the way that I wanted to show up. And when we drill in specifically what that looks like, instead of just having it as a label, it's I wish I was getting up early or earlier. Mm. I wish I was having my business client attraction activities done at the start of the day rather than being exhausted at the end of the day and having to try and do it then. Mm. so what would be the drawback to you of getting up earlier and getting those things done right now the drawback uh well it's cold in the mornings (laughs) and um I guess it just is more difficult to get up earlier because I'm not into that habit yet I mean I get up pretty early but not as early as I would like to Okay, but that's just more of the running of the story of how it's hard work. I want to know if you you wish you were getting up earlier, you've got this daydream, this fantasy about life would be so much better, my business would be better if I was getting up earlier. Mm. If you were getting up earlier, what would be the drawback to you? Like I would have to go to bed earlier. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay, well, that's gaining something that you resent. What I know about you, um, some of the things that you really value is connection, connection with yourself, connection with others. Yes? Yes. You also like to be a light for people. Yes. And you also like to have a sense of control over your time. Yeah. So these are some key things that are of high value to you. Mm. What would be the drawback to you of getting up earlier in the thing that you value, which is connection? Mm, I guess if I'm getting up earlier and I'm going to bed earlier, then I may not have time for seeing friends or 
family or dating, things like that, that I would usually do in the afternoons or at night time. Okay, perfect. Now we're starting to get a little closer. And by the way, team, you should be answering these questions for yourself. Yeah? Because you're all running a version of this story. I should be doing X. But the truth is, is that you've created your life around what you value right now. Helen dating, I wish. No, Helen, it's peaceful. Don't date. It's a trap. <laughs> Unless it's John Mayer, then we can date. Yeah. <laughs> right? So you're, you've got routines and habits because up until recently, your main priorities have been around getting your connection needs met through the vehicle of friends, family and dating. Yeah, yeah. So now my question to you is, what would be the benefit of you getting your connection needs met in the vehicle of your business and specifically the client attraction activities that you do in Hour of Power? I guess I would be in alignment with the version of myself that I want to become and what mm -hmm. I want to achieve rather than hanging out with family and friends and then being like, oh, I'll do this another day and setting it off and creating um, shame instead of confidence. So, yeah, if I was connecting in the mornings, can you hear the, the cars in the background? It's okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> if I was connecting in the mornings um, through my business, then... I would, it would kind of relate to building something for the future and becoming the person that I want to be rather than just remaining stagnant. Now, my love, it's not one or the other. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes we think in order to get A, I've got to sacrifice B or in order to get B, I've got to sacrifice A. Mm. You can have everything that you want right yeah but what we're trying to do here today is <clears throat> get you to see that in right now the scales are tipped and you're like well I get my connection needs met through friends family and dating and you're seeing that the business is a chore the, the showing up and being connected with potential clients is a chore we can all relate, can we not? Oh, Shani wants me to do Hour of Power again. <laughs> and you tell yourself that it's a task. So many of you are turning up to Business Builder, seeing it as a task instead of going, I get to connect with my future clients today. Mm. And Ella, you said something really important, which is about your future self. So I'm going to draw something. Some of you may have seen it. Doesn't hurt to see it again. Let's have a look at this. Yes. <clears throat> so Ella, and for all of you, <coughs> this is you right now. And in this present moment, you're telling yourself a story about the future version of you. You're telling yourself that it's going to be so much better when I get here. My future self, I'll be aligned to my future self. And we're having a fantasy about this person and what life looks like in the future. And right now, you're feeling heartbroken and frustrated because you're comparing now to some fantasy in the future. But here's you in the past, three months ago. And three months ago, you were heartbroken because you weren't happy because you thought that in the future, 
things would be better. And now you're here and you're running the same bullshit story. And when you get here, when this becomes the present, the same scenario is going to happen. You'll get here, guys. And you're going to, as soon as you get here, you've created a vision of or a fantasy of the next version of yourself that you're comparing your current reality to. This is just a cycle. The experience that you're having right now in this present moment is going to happen again in the next present moment. So your job is to love what's happening now so that you love the next future version and the next future version. Does that make sense? Yes. Can you see that three months ago, again, this is a question for all of you, can you see that three months ago you had a vision of what you thought now would look like? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. so how else can it be a benefit to you to get your connection needs met through the vehicle of your business how's it a benefit to you to use your business as connection mm. because i'll be focusing on having more connections with more people rather than just a smaller amount of people that I already know. How's that a benefit to you though? How's it a benefit to have more connections rather than a small sphere of influence? Because I think my, my self-belief stems partly from what others think of me. Mm -hmm. And so if I have a smaller group of people I'm connected connected with and um I don't know one of them thinks poorly of me it probably stings more to me now because I have a smaller group but if I had a larger group of people I'm connected with then it kind of mm. spreads that across multiple people so it's it does that make sense yeah, it does. It's actually, this is actually really wise. And I'm, I'm wondering if you guys are getting this. It's, it's almost like, so the law of the one and the many, <clears throat> right? Which basically is from the one comes the many mm. and the many turn back into the one. So Helen, don't worry about dating because if you're in business, you're dating multiple people at once. <laughs> right now in our inner circle there's 130 people i'm dating 130 of you right now <laughs> who's got time for john mayer <laughs> me <laughs> aralea you keep your hands off <laughs> right but what what you're saying ella is that <clears throat> You can have your friends and family connections, but the wider you expand your impact through your business team, you become less volatile in perceiving that you are needing one person because you have many. Yeah, that, that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, answer me this. See you, Helen. What is the drawback to you of currently getting your connection needs met through your friends, your family, and specifically dating? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I said dating because I have been doing it recently, but I kind of stopped this week. Anyway, besides the point. Um, through dating specifically well I can only date one person like I can still date multiple people at a time but in terms of spending time with 
someone while dating, it's only one person at a time. So it's more honed in and it's not getting me towards my business goals because. Okay, stop right there. We'll say that again. It's not getting me towards my business goals. Right. Team, ask yourself, what am I currently doing or where am I placing my time, focus and energy? Or more specifically, is there a who? <clears throat> is there someone or something that you are currently placing your time and energy into that is actually not getting you to closer towards your goals, is actually detracting from it? Maria gave the beautiful example this week of having given up Netflix. Now, I'm not saying don't watch Netflix. I'm not saying don't date. But are we going to get to our, at the end of our lives and go, I wish I'd watched another series on Netflix. Or are we going to get to the end of our life and go, geez, I wish I'd dated 50 people in 2022. Or are we going to get there and wish we'd done more to leave a legacy that we can be inspired by? Immediate gratification versus long-term vision. Most people are not thinking long-term. I know you guys are. Actually, every single one of you, <clears throat> except for one of you, has been with me for quite some time. So I know you have long-term vision. That's why you're here. But if we fill it up with immediate gratification on a daily basis... You get to the end of the week and you feel shame and disappointed with yourself. Is that a fair assumption? Because you know that what you did didn't fit into where you want to be. See you, Britta. How, how else is it a benefit to get your connection needs met in your business? What does your business or your potential clients give you that no dating family or friend time can give you pretty much the opposite of what I'm creating now so when I complete my business activities especially first thing in the morning it sets me up for the day but I also feel like it creates every day I do that there's like a little bit more extra confidence in me and my business and the goal I want to get towards whereas okay. Yeah. If I don't take that action, I know that wasn't your question, but I'm just doing the follow up. It's, if I don't take that action, it's not like I don't get the confidence. It's actually the opposite of that, where I create this build up of shame. So it's like it brings me further apart. Okay. Are we seeing ourselves in Ella? <clears throat> what does confidence mean to you, Ella? Let's, let's define that label. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Guys, I would encourage you to, in fact, share in the chat. What, is, what does the word confidence mean to you while Ella's sharing her definition? What is confidence? I think it's just a feeling that I am showing up for myself and it's, a, it's something I feel in the body, so it's hard to explain what it is for me. Where in the body do you, do you feel it? In my chest. Specifically, anywhere in the chest? Like all across. It's like when you improve your posture, you feel uh -huh. good about life and believe in yourself and it makes you more likely to want to do the things the next day, whether that's for the business or for everything. Okay, right. So in the chest, and like you said, it you kind of your shoulders are back. So what what what's sitting in the chest? Your heart. <laughs> your heart. So can you see that when you make a commitment to get your client attraction and your business activities done at the start of the day, it builds your confidence which doesn't just serve you in your business, but you then actually start the day with an open heart and a belief in yourself that you can carry through in everything else that you do. Yes. Oh, she's had a, she's had a little light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<clears throat> because we started this conversation where everyone was agreeing that sometimes we look at our business activities as chores. Oh, I've got to do this thing again. Mm. I've got to go and connect with potential clients. I've got to respond to emails, la, 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 la. And it becomes this tick box. Mm. But can you actually see that it's an opportunity to connect with yourself, open your heart and energize you for the gym, for dating, for family time? Yes. I just realized it's the thing that lights me up. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah so is there anything left there do you still wish that you were doing something different or can you see that what you've been doing has served you up until this moment I think that what I've been doing so far has led me to this conversation so uh -huh. it was always what was meant to happen but now I can readjust <clears throat> and yeah, I, I feel pretty complete now. I, I think I can just focus one hour every morning getting up earlier and doing my hops and starting the day off like that. Kind of just makes sense now. <laughs> okay, great. What is it that you want? What's the gift you want to give the world through your business, Ella? And again, for all of you, I'd encourage you to write down, what is the gift I want to give to, to, my, to the world through my business? Don't parrot this off if you've done this before, by the way. You've become a robot. Ella, what is it that you want to give? I've done this in the BG have exercise, but now I'm like, I'll just think of it on the spot. Um, you don't have to think. You're, you know this is who you are. What is it you want to give your clients? Confidence in themselves. Oh... Now, at the start of this conversation, we spoke about how we're often trying to run away from challenges. Yeah. But it's in our challenges that we find the greatest opportunity for growth. Mm. We also started this conversation, Ella, with um, a, a, where we spoke about how you can only meet your future clients as deeply as you've met yourself, team. <clears throat> so can you see that this challenge you've been having Ella has not detracted from you growing your business it's actually helped you to be in a better position to serve clients can you can you see what I'm saying here yes <laughs> how's it given you that gift because I I'm going through and I have been through what they're going through so I'm better able to connect with them at their level. Perfect. Guys, whatever the thing is that you're experiencing right now, that you're beating yourself up about, that you wish you were doing better, that you wish you had structured in your day, that you think is going to be better in the future, you're experiencing what you're experiencing right now so that you can better serve your clients. You can't understand people unless you've been through the challenge yourself. You know those people that get on social media and they spruik about how they're going to help you do 10K months, but they haven't done 10K months? They're not going to be able to help you. The people that get on social media and say, I'm going to show you how to do 100K months, but they haven't themselves achieved that. They can't help you. If you don't embrace the challenge, you can't help the next version of your client, your future client. You have to go through the challenge are you loving the challenge now ella yes <laughs> <laughs> give me the challenge i want the challenge i want all the challenge <laughs> seriously though i i get it because we're animals and we will we will want to run away from pain and run into pleasure mm. But I've started to get myself into this habit now of when I'm in like dark challenge, I'm like, hang on a minute. 
What's it? What is it? It's helping me to solve a problem here that I can help my client solve. What is that? Yeah. So I would encourage all of you to write the question down to ask yourself now and next week when you have a challenge. What is this challenge? What is the problem that this challenge is helping me to solve for myself and my future clients? And keep looking for that because the quicker you find it, the quicker you can show up again. Without Ella, you don't need motivation. Motivation is what people have to get to go to the gym because really they want to sit on the couch and eat a cupcake, meaning that it's not of high priority to them. Yeah. Do you feel inspired now? Not, oh, I'm, I need motivation. <laughs> yes, I do. So is there anything left there for you to beat yourself up about or are you just ready to get, get on to getting the job done now? I think I'm pretty much ready to get on to it. Now the only thing that is in the back of my mind is if I have this one hour in my business in the mornings, mm -hmm. am I still going to focus? Like I'll still have an outcome goal for each morning. Um, but I'm just wondering how I should tweak that just to make it something that I can build on over time. Um, okay. Does that make sense? Like, because it's kind of like when I think of going to the gym, initially I had this idea that if I just continue to show up, then mm -hmm. I will build progress. And then on yep. top of that, I started to have goals around, you know, lifting X number of kilos or yep. something like that. So now okay. I'm just wondering if I focus on showing up first and then building the outcomes from that. Yes. Bingo. So you and I are working one-on-one -on -one and I know you've got a spreadsheet and I love that you're tracking those numbers because it helps us to grow you quicker. But this yep. is relevant for all of you, by the way. Um, because all of you are in business build up. When you come to those sessions, I want you to have a plan and have clarity around, okay, what is it that I want to do today? But also just like the gym or just like dating, you show up, the clarity comes in the doing and you do build momentum. So yes, Ella, I know you've got specific numbered goals, but don't get attached to that number. Because by the way, some days you might find 20 people to connect with and mm -hmm. other days it might only be two, but we're looking for the mean and the mean is the average across a time period in the middle. It's not got to get this number done absolutely on this day, robot, robot, robot. Yes. <clears throat> and you can see that when you all started going and exercising or doing yoga or doing meditation, you started here at the bottom. And all of a sudden you were taking baby steps, but then all really quickly there was like this asymmetric leap, right? Where it was like step, 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 step. And then all of a sudden there was like this massive leap. Yeah. It's the same thing. Okay, I'm now complete. <laughs> okay, she's complete. All right. Aralea was because you and, and Ella had similar sort of things, different but similar. Uh, did you get a, did you kind of get a lot out of today as well? Having Ella in the hot seat, did you? Yeah. Okay. All right, team. Um, I would love for you to share in the chat what's been your insight from today. Sylvia says yes, she got a lot out of Ella being in the hot seat. Give you a couple of minutes to jump into the chat. What did you see for yourself? What did you hear? What was your insight? Because of synchronicity, there are no mistakes that it was Ella that was in the hot seat today. There was a message in there for all of us. How quickly can you type? Ella, while they're doing that, what did you get out of today, beautiful? I think a, just a, an inner sense of knowing and um, self-trust and just feeling inspired to show up in the mornings now before my day and know that it's going to have a trickle-down effect 
like a positive trickle down effect to every other area of my life. Perfect. Because being in business is actually about being in relationship with yourself. Yes. Like there's no freaking hiding. Can you see that? There's no hiding from yourself as an entrepreneur, <laughs> right? You have beautiful insights about who you are and you also have to deal with a whole bunch of stuff that you don't want to face about who you are. <laughs> So Erwin shares that he, what his insight has been is that you can't understand or help people unless you, infer, you first embrace the challenge. Um, that's one of my favourites. Thanks for sharing, Erwin. Sylvia, uh, you got, what you got out of today was being able to reframe how you see our business builder sessions. Like it's something that actually helps you to, helps you to serve. Aralea says, beautiful session. You love the perspective that business is an opportunity to connect with people just going through the challenge you just left behind. I like the way you've worded that. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, Maria, what is the gift that I want to give the world? It's an important question for me to dream about. It seems like that it changes along the way. Yeah, I think it at, at its core, you all have a vision of what you want to give. But every time you solve a challenge, it expands. So I think that that's a really beautiful insight as well. Um, haven't heard from Anna, Samaya or Manuela. I wonder if you guys are tapping away. You are? Okay, I'll give it a second. Um, <clears throat> Ella, thank you for being in the hot seat and being brave and courageous today to be very vulnerable. Um, everybody gets benefit out of what you've shared today. So I really, really want to thank you for being so open and showing up for yourself, but also the community. No worries. Thanks for having the masterclass. That is my pleasure. So Manuela says what she got was how her challenge helps her clients, which also goes with my exploration of different niches. And Anna says, what is going on in my life and the challenges I'm facing are an opportunity to help my clients and I don't need to feel stuck. So I think the key theme here today has been kind of across the board that we have a tendency to make our challenge about ourselves, but now we actually have expanded awareness. We can see that it's also about our clients and we, we're actually now energised in the challenge to show up for them. Team, thank you so much for carving out this space and making yourself available because it's also the collective energy that helps us all to expand and grow. So I really want to thank you. I know it's very late for you, Euros. What's incredible is that uh, it's mostly the Euros here today. <laughs> so you guys have done an incredible job. I love you. Thank you so much. And I'll see you at Business Builder next session. Bye for now. Ciao, ciao.